Sean and I are treating this like our title fight. You know, like we've been the, the same coach and student for, you know, almost 12 years now. Mark and I have been in the sport together since the beginning, you know, and there's more than just a coach and fighter relationship we have, you know, we're brothers and most of all we're best friends. He's always been my head trainer, he's always been the guy in my corner, I've never had a fight without him. It's as much a title shot as it is for him as it is for me. When they told us we were fighting Aldo, I knew Mark couldn't couldn't prepare in Vegas. There was too much on the line with his family and you know a, a new a newborn baby on the way and this is the only way to do it. We gotta get ready for this in Canada. It's been huge having the whole training camp here and having Sean come uh, bring guys up from Vegas and from Montreal and from all over the world, really. I don't have to travel. You know, it's 20 minutes to the gym, 20 minutes home, and everyone's been coming here. So it's been a huge addition that everyone's came to help me. The fact that his wife is due four days after his fight, and, that, you know, we all know when that's in a case scenario like that, it could happen at any time surrounding that fight before or after. And uh, out of our friendship and my respect to him, you know, I decided it was it was a good idea to make it as easy as possible and easy in the situation is for the fighter. Justin, you're with Jesse. Uh, Lindsay and Chris are together, takedown for takedown. Chris, just stay loose. The last hard week of training, you're just kind of getting through everything. You know, it's not a lot of, you're not really thinking about things, you're, you're just kind of getting through the work and that's what that's the point it's at. Uh, well, today's our, it's our Monday training session. So what we want to do is we're going to start the week off with a real hard one. That way we can gauge what we want to do for the rest of the week. Every round, Mark's going to have a new person in the cage with him. That way I've always got somebody fresh with him. So not only is he testing himself, but at the same time, he has to maintain keeping a high intensity level the whole class. Time in the cage, guys. Ready for small glove sparring. Vaseline. Make you stay young and beautiful. <laughs> We understand and respect Jose Aldo enough to know that I think he's pound for pound probably the top three in the world. And the best thing about Jose Aldo as a fighter is he's good at everything. Um, and, and knowing Mark Hominick as well as I do, um, it's not a mean thing to say, but he goes through sparring partners, you know, at a very quick rate. So um, not only did I bring certain guys for certain things, but I needed to bring guys that would either be durable or I could be half prepared to have to go home if they're not keeping their weight. Uh, first round we're gonna work is a guy named Jesse Gross, uh, one of our young up and, up and coming fighters. And one of the main things with him is I want him in first because I know he'll be aggressive and he'll try to test him and push him back. Uh, backing him up, keeping the control of the cage, find your spots, okay? Think about that inside leg a little bit today. I think I put together probably a team of up to 12 of the best sparring partners I could for Mark, all being good at different things and uh, all being brought in at different times. So the guys who are here at the end of camp are here for a reason. First round, guys. Five today. Tom, let's work. The one of the key things that Mark's always had, go, you know, going for him is he's probably the most mentally strong fighter I've ever trained. You know, he takes his stuff seriously like he should but he you know he treats it like it's his job beautiful heavy hip we've had to deal with the media with the fans you know and as much as we love all that stuff it's it's a lot to add in when you're getting ready for a world title fight but uh, th if there's one guy I trust that can handle that kind of thing it's Mark Hominick good job time good job great round Mark I've always been like that. Even when I was in university, like I was training for title fights even back then and I you know, I'd plan on my day so I get my training, I go to the school, I you know, study for a bit, go train again, then study some more. So it, it's it kinda reminds me of those days. Full works on, that's what I want. Those feet are moving, you're gonna have more chances to make decisions than he does. There's no free time. There's no time to, to mess around like you know, okay, it's A to B, B to C, C to D, and that's the way the day goes. It doesn't deviate from that. Second person in the cage with him is going to be Chris Wardeski. Obviously, everybody knows who he is. Chris is a kicker, so I want to have somebody in there in the second round because Aldo tends to kick a lot more in the second round once he teaches people to back up. Work time. 
Sean, is there anything specifically for Aldo you guys have been working on? Absolutely. Obviously, one of the biggest things with Aldo, it's no secret, he likes to teach people how to move backwards. He gets them into a groove. The one thing that impresses me the most about Aldo is he knows how to fight five round fights better than almost any fighter I've ever seen. He's that much of a pro. And what he does that first round is he gets you in the motion of moving backwards without knowing you're doing it. So what we want to do is we want to give him pressure back and not allow him to do that. And if he is moving us backwards, he's got to deal with us possibly going around him. Mark's always been a pressure fighter too. How does that come Well, that's, that's, that's what makes this fight, to me anyways, the most interesting in any of the Aldo fights because everybody he's fought is guys that run in and back up. And majority of them, he'll sting them once and they run for the whole round. With Mark, that's, I mean, I've been sparring partner for Mark. I'm twice his size for 12 years. I don't think he's ever backed up once, you know. Time. Good round, guys. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming, but it's been a great feeling, especially this fight coming up with Mark. We've really realized how much support we have. I spent probably a month of preparation getting great sponsors behind us to take care of all these little things that it takes to not only fly fighters here, but feed them and, and have a house over their head. What's up, Fight Network? Welcome to uh, the Fighter Crib. Come on in. Obviously, first and foremost, like any other Fighter Crib, you've got the air mattress with uh, sleeping bags slash uh, makeshift pillows from a couch. A bonus for me when renting a house is a floor that can be easily cleaned if puked on, bled on. We've got uh, our cases of water, which uh, I will replace daily, four cases of water daily. And, uh, you know, as owed to a great fighter, George Foreman. Oh, and look here, fighters. Throughout the entire month, we will have had probably 18 guys who have separated, changed back and forth through the house. Anybody that's ever trained with Mark Hominick can will attest to the fact that sometimes the guys don't make it all the way through camp. So, of course, being the coach, of course, they give me the best room with the best furniture and everything. My beautiful mattress on top of a box spring with my wooden floor covered in uh, paint specs. Of course, a place to hang all my beautiful clothes. Third person in is a kid that I brought with me from Las Vegas. His name is Justin Lin. Uh, an up and coming 145 pounder. He's had about nine amateur fights and he's 2-0 and as a pro. I brought him on purpose because he's a real scrappy, aggressive kid and he's very well rounded. I'm gonna put him in the third round with, with uh, Mark and then I'll decide from there who I want for his last two rounds depending upon how I want Mark tested. There you go, good. That'll put him on his heels. See what Mark's doing right there. He's teaching Justin to move backwards. Get taking his respect in the first minute of the round. And then even if Justin wants to move forward by the end of the round, he can, he's on his heels. It's impossible to find your balance again, which makes it hard to kick hard. Yeah, I'm real excited about this, this kid, Justin. 21 years old. He's got so much potential. He doesn't even know he's got potential. He's got so much, you know? Nice job. Tom! Good round. Good round. Good job, Justin. Come on out. Tom in the ring! I've been training uh, with Sean for about three years now, on and off late, lately, but th this past year and a half, pretty, pretty much straightforward, and uh, I think it's a great opportunity for me, man. I, he, he's gonna take me place, he takes care of me, you know? Don't stay in his guard, try to pass his guard. Yes, sir. Try to get him to turn over, yes, sir. okay? If we can try to get him to turn over, I want him to have to deal with you trying to get to his back, okay? You know, I mean, of course, I'm not, no, I'm not an Aldo, but I mean, I, uh, I'm gonna push him as much as I can because I really want him to bring back the belt, you know? And, uh, and I can tell you, I, I, I kind of helped in a little bit on that, you know? And I, it'd be kind of cool to be a part of that, so. Work time. Justin, I want to sit for this whole round, okay? Get your breathing back. I might use you for the last one. You're doing good. That was the best round you've done this camp. That's what we need from you. That's why you're here. Beautiful job all the way up. I don't know when his camp's got to know that they're dealing with Mark's hand speed, Mark's striking, but do you care? Does that matter that they know that? Not at all. I mean, we realize through percentages the most of the time when you lose, you're more concerned about what the other guy's doing. 
When you go out there and you put in a performance that's uh, adapt to your style, you generally win. And that's what we've seen, especially with Mark in his last five fights. He's been going out there and just not, not caring what they do, caring about what he does. Tom! Good job, guys. It's funny, but you, you almost like erase that stuff from your mind. You have to or it'll eat you alive. And, and if you do keep that stuff in your mind all the time, these things will never happen. You know, we've, we've always known who we are and what we deserve. And uh, we just keep clawing and, tr and trying our best to get to that point. Fifth and final coming up. Work time, last one, let's go. You know what I'm looking for, Justin? Let's make it happen, that's it right there. Pressure, pressure, pressure. That's what we want, right there. That's our hand speed, beautiful job. He's just as fresh at, at 22 minutes as he was at the beginning of the year. Yeah, uh, he's in great shape, he's in great shape. Most important thing in this camp that I've been really stressing is he's healthy. It's so hard to get, get through just any normal fight camp being healthy with no injuries. And especially Mark, he's been doing this for close to 14 years. And that helps you be fresh for five rounds. Last minute, it's, it's been a great camp, but to see this happening right now, I'm impressed. I'm happy where we're at. We just need that day to come. It can't come fast enough, man. I'm seeing things today that we've been working on for the last two weeks happening. And that's, that's key. Tom, good finish, good start, good finish, guys. Good job. You know, the start of the end of the week, I'm, I know my mind's gonna be starting to think more about the fight than the training right now. You know, I'm, I'm right now I'm just making sure everything's on point. I'm staying healthy. I'm staying sharp, and uh, you know, eager on to train every day. Come over pizza tonight. Yeah. Where, which class of pizza? One on Wellington. What? <laughs> Guys, just want to make a quick cheers for everybody's support and help. You know, everybody's really stepped up to help Mark out, get ready for this fight. If we got our way, we're going to take that belt home. So, cheers, guys. Cheers. Now let's eat everything Mark can't. Yeah. <laughs> Sean and I are treating this like our title fight. His mindset going in there, he wants to win so bad. I want to win so bad. And it's just, this is our time, this is our opportunity, and we've, we've done everything we can. If we trust in ourselves and know that we haven't missed anything in training and preparation, then there should be no reason that we can't go out there and impose our will. We have each round planned out, you know. We know how Jose fights, and he's a round-by-round -round fighter as well. So we just gotta be better in each round. You know, if I finish him in the first round, great, but if it goes all five rounds, I'm gonna beat him every five rounds. That's, that's kind of the game plan. I mean, it, we, we know what fighting is. You know, we, we've been on both sides of it. We've won and we've lost, and we've dealt with some of the best in the world already. And, we know that it, at any time, anything can happen in this sport. 